Hello, my esteemed viewers. In this tutorial, we continue with link layer MAC protocols. In the previous tutorial, that is tutorial number three, uh, you might recall that we discussed slotted Aloha protocol as one among the uh, the random access protocols and in this tutorial we will discuss we will continue with Aloha protocol and it is the the first protocol that is Aloha protocol the slotted Aloha protocol required uh, that all the nodes synchronize their transmissions to start at the beginning of the slot the first Aloha protocol which is the point of discussion is actually unslotted it is a fully decentralized protocol in and it is called as pure aloha with this particular sense when a frame in in this in this protocol when a frame first arrives that is a network layer datagram is passed down from the network layer at the sending node the node immediately transmits the frame in its entirety into the broadcast channel if a transmitted frame experiences a collision with one or more other transmissions, the node will then immediately, after completely transmitting its collided frame, retransmit the frame with probability P. That means this protocol is also involved with the probability P, therefore it is also called it is also included under random access protocol. Otherwise, so it will transmit the frame with probability P. Otherwise, the node waits for a frame transmission time. After this wait, it then transmits the frame with probability P or waits or it remains idle for another frame time with probability 1 minus P. That means it transmits with probability P. Otherwise, it waits with a probability 1 minus P. Um, to determine the, the maximum efficiency of pure aloha, uh, we focus on an individual node uh, it is it is over here it's over here uh, we will make the same assumptions as in our slotted aloha analysis that is uh, the length of the length of the files are same and the and the data rate of the channel is same and take the frame transmission time to be the unit of time okay and we will take the transmission time to be a unit time for the sake of simplicity at any given time, the probability that a node is transmitting a frame is P. Suppose this frame begins transmission at T0, that is indicated over here, as shown in this particular slide, in this figure. In order for this frame to be successfully transmitted, no other nodes can begin their transmission in the interval of time T0-1 and T0. Okay, and so also T0 and t naught plus one and there is there can be no other node which is ahead of this which is in front of this releasing its frame at t naught plus one because there is a collision that happens there is a collision that happens uh, and this is how the pure aloha protocol works now we will come to carrier sense multiple access csmea means carrier sense multiple access and carrier sense multiple access and collision detection of course in this particular name there are two protocols two random access protocols one is purely carrier sense multiple access protocol and other one is carrier carrier sense multiple access as well as collision detection uh, we have we may recall just now we conduct we just explained uh, the slotted aloha and pure aloha a node's decision to transmit is made independently of the activity of the other nodes attached to the broadcast channel and they are at their mercy they can always transmit their channel at their whims and fancy if they if they involve in collision they will be they will be retaken back they will be taken back and they will be retransmitted otherwise they will be waiting for a, a, for a for a time which is associated with probability in particular in both the cases, a node neither pays attention to whether another node happens to be transmitting the frame, uh, 
uh, or when it begins to transmit nor stops the transmitting if another node begins to interface with the interfere with the transmission uh, aloha protocols are quite like uh, like a, like a boorish party goer who continues to chatter away regardless of whether other people are talking as humans we have human protocols that allow us not only to behave with more civility but also to decrease the amount of time spent colliding with each other in conversation and consequently to increase the amount of data we exchange in our conversation specifically there are two important rules for a polite human conversation and uh, CSMEA and CSMEA uh, bar CD are based on this uh, this humanistic conversation with a with a kind of a philosophy with a kind of a philosophy you can say it as a philosophy or we can we can say it as a rule listen before speaking is one of the philosophies if someone else is speaking wait until they are finished uh, in in the network world this is called carrier sensing a node listens to the channel before transmitting if a frame from another node is uh, currently being transmitted into the channel uh, a node then waits or it backs off it backs off a random amount of time and then again senses the channel if the channel is sensed to be idle again the node then begins the frame transmission otherwise the node waits for another random amount of time so before transmitting here there is sensing the energy energy of the of the of the frames which are moving in the broadcast channel can be sensed so the nodes under csmea cd philosophy are capable enough to detect whether a node is started transmitting okay uh, the other philosophy here with cd is that is collision detection is if someone else begins talking at the same time stop talking i repeat as far as collision detection philosophy is concerned or the the protocol is concerned the philosophy of conversation is if someone else begins talking at the same time stop talking in the networking world or in the in the uh, link layer world this is called as collision detection a transmitting node listens to the channel while it is transmitting if it if it detects that another node is transmitting an inter inter interfering frame it stops transmitting and uses some 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 protocol to determine when it should not when it should uh, attempt for the next transmission these two rules are embodied in the family of carrier sense multiple access csma aptly called and csma with collision detection protocols uh, let us say this can be explained uh, let us say uh, at time t okay these things whatever that i told is written over here uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, recording for the purpose of recording let us say uh, let us say uh, at a time t not these are all the four nodes a b c d they are along this broadcast channel they are contemplating to transmit their frame let us say at time t not at time t not d uh, uh, d senses the the node d senses that the channel is idle uh, as no other nodes are currently transmitting then node d thus begins transmitting with its bits propagating in both directions along the broadcast medium this way as well as this way uh, uh, the downward propagation of b's bits is shown symbolically over here uh, that b bits actually have to propagate um, albeit at near the speed of light along the broadcast medium uh, at time t1 at time t1 that is t1 greater than t0 uh, uh, node b will send its frame or node b will start sending its frame at time t1 t1 being greater than t0 it is shown over here t0 is over here the first instance and in the second instance b will start sending the node and uh, sending its frame uh, uh, so node because node b has its uh, has a frame to send has a frame to send mm. at a in accordance with the csma protocol uh, actually b is interfering 
okay interfering with the d's transmission d's transmission so from the figure it is evident that the end to end channel propagation delay of the broadcast channel the time it takes for a signal to propagate from one end one of the nodes to the another one node to the another node and the intersection point so as far as d's transmission is concerned it's going to collide at this particular point maybe the sensing of this particular uh, this particular node whether uh, as as the frames have been collided may take little bit of amount of time so therefore the collision detection may happen over here or over here and this is the time duration because uh, because the interference of p's transmission with d's transmission happens here for for this way journey of the frames and for the as far as this way journey is concerned it's going to hit it's going to hit the transmission of d somewhere over here okay there is a time elapse there is a time elapse between t2 and t3 and this particular interval it is this particular interval where collision is detected and the the frame relay is aborted aborted okay so this is carrier sense multiple axis and collision detection while carrier sense multiple access protocol will will sense the other node getting transmitted while collision detection protocol will will be able to precisely detect whether or not collision has happened okay oh, right now comes the last kind of protocol the third kind called as taking turns protocol um aloha you have we have seen aloha and csma protocols uh, have the first property the property uh, when when only one node is active the active node has to transmit uh, when m nodes are active then all the m nodes are to be given a chance maybe in a round robin fashion that is the basis of turning uh, taking turn protocols i repeat if multiple nodes are trying to push their frames okay the chance should be given for only one node which should be active with a throughput of r bps that is the philosophy of uh, uh, the carrier sense and uh, aloha protocols while here if m nodes are active then every node every node should share the throughput like r by m okay where r is the throughput of the channel and m that means every every node should be given equal chance to transmit their uh, transmit their protocol uh, transmit their frames and this is the essence of the taking turn protocols mm, because as with random access protocols there are dozens of taking turn protocols uh, with each one of the protocol different with respect to a different criteria and that means each and every protocol will come with uh, variations uh, anyway we will restrict our discussion only to two predominantly used protocols that is one is polling protocol the other one is taking a token passing protocol uh, the polling protocol uh, requires one of the contending nodes to be designated as a master node uh, as a leader let us say as a master node the master node polls that means it is it is a it's a kind of inquiring something like a question i but here it is it is it is not that way anyway master node polls each of the nodes in round robin fashion in particular the master node first sends a message to node one say uh, among the contending nodes uh, it can transmit up to some maximum number of frames if at all it is wishing to transmit after node 1 transmits some frames the master node tells node 2 can which can transmit up to the maximum number of frames the master node can determine when a node has finished sending its frames by observing the lack of signal on the channel so master node also senses here when it notices lack of signal on the channel it requests or it 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 allows 
the next node to transmit its frame completely completely the procedure continues in this manner with the master node polling each of the nodes in a cyclic fashion polling means uh, asking let us say whether whether a next node is wishing to send its frame therefore the polling protocol eliminates the collisions and the empty slots that plague the random access protocols this allows polling to achieve a much higher efficiency but it has a few drawbacks the first drawback uh, should be the protocol introduces a polling delay because every every node is to be questioned whether it is wishing to send its packet maybe in the form of a bit field if it is if it is one then it it wishes to send if it is zero it doesn't wish to send it doesn't want to send something like that the amount of time required to notify a node that it can transmit that is another delay uh, for example uh, only one node is active then the node will transmit at a rate less than rbps that is uh, that is the channel speed as the master node uh, must poll each of the inactive nodes in turn each time the active node has sent its maximum number of frames the second drawback which is potentially more serious okay uh, that was that was therefore in order to eliminate this in order to eliminate this there is another protocol uh, second uh, the second predominant protocol widely used which is called as taking turn protocol or it's also called as token passing protocol this is one among taking turn protocols in this protocol there is no master node a small special purpose frame as it is shown over here a small special purpose frame um, will be will be uh, it will be taking a tour and this frame is called as a token it is exchanged among the nodes in some fixed order maybe in clockwise or anti clockwise for example uh, for example uh, node 1 has already transmitted it has to capture this node it has to capture this particular token until it finishes all its frame relay all its frame sending of its frame then it re it has to release this particular token into the mainstream into this broadcast channel and if node 2 is willing to transmit its frame it will capture this token it will hold it for a while till it transmits all its frames then it will release release this particular token so token token will be just meandering over this frame in a circular fashion in a circular fashion a node one might always send to the token to node two node two might always send to the token node three node n might always send the token to node one once again uh, when a node receives a token it holds uh, it holds uh, on to the token only if it has some frames to transmit i am repeating otherwise it immediately forwards the token to the next node if a node does have frames to transmit when it receives the token it will also send the send the to a maximum number of frames and then forwards the token to the next node token passing is a decentralized and highly efficient it has proved to be highly efficient but it has its own uh, uh, its own problems as well for example the failure of one node failure of one node can crash the entire channel or if a node accidentally neglects to release the token or if it if it holds the token for a greater amount of time then some recovery procedure must be invoked to get the token back in circulation over the years many token passing passing protocols have been developed and each one had to address uh, these as well as uh, some of the other sticky issues uh, of course uh, uh, we never content to explain all those things okay because it doesn't purview it doesn't come under the purview of this particular tutorial okay uh, and their protocols are aptly called as fddi and ieee802.5 okay uh, and that will be expressed uh, explained in the maybe in the later part of the tutorial so with this uh, we have completed in this tutorial um, the mac protocols that is uh, in once again we will recall memory that is um, uh, channel partitioning protocols random access protocols and taking turn protocols with this we will complete this uh, tutorial tutorial and uh, bye and if you have liked this tutorial i request my respected viewers to subscribe to